a city carved in wood, cars going nowhere. In fact, Cairo city officials would prefer there were no cars here at all, here in one of the most important and historic suburbs of Egypt. Well, we're in old Cairo at the moment, on a street called Moez Ladin Elan. Officials here want to modernize this place to attract more tourists. And the contention is that by stopping cars coming through, which is one of the problems for uh, I suppose officials, that they're going to take away the, the livelihood of, of some of the people that have been here for years. People like Ahmed Mohammed, who's been here for the past 15 years. He's saying it's going to be a very difficult thing because uh, a lot of the businesses here are dependent on cars uh, to, to, bring, to bring the supplies in, to take them out. A business like his services those cars, so he doesn't see he doesn't see the possibility of eliminating the, the entrance of cars into this area. Uh, he's all for tourism, and he's saying that tourism has functioned here for many many years without the street being turned into a pedestrian only street. So he wants to to find a solution that's a middle ground between what uh, what some people want to turn it into a pedestrian only area and to keep some of these businesses here, you know, because otherwise a lot of businesses and a lot of people are going to be displaced by this, uh, by this plan. Cars have become as much a part of the fabric here today as the Daily T1, but as a government UNESCO co-report highlighted some 27 years ago, traffic is responsible for pollution and the degrading of buildings. Shops selling these instead, it's believed, will pull in walking tourists. Isham Hassanwa's store was passed down to him from his father. He's all for change. He said it's going to be a very good thing for the street because uh, the cars and uh, everything else were preventing people from seeing the actual antiquities on the street. And so it's going to be a good thing for um, the, the street as a whole. The old city is a treasure trail of ancient landmarks and monuments and some of Egypt's oldest mosques. That report said there were 450 listed buildings here in an area 4 square kilometres. Many of the buildings require restoration and attention to prevent them from ruining. This is what officials want beyond this sign. No traffic, but only a labyrinth of commercial shops selling tourist goods. So for someone like Ahmed, who sells tyres for a living, what will he do? Um, he's saying, in the beginning and the end, it's all God's will. Whatever happens, it's God's will. Okay. Um, if necessary, he will change his line of business to a business that is more uh, tourist friendly. Um, although he doesn't know what the potential success of that business would be, but he is willing to uh, adapt if that is the, uh, the only solution. On our way home, an argument breaks out between locals. You can almost draw parallels between the sort of thing that might happen when officials finally give those shop owners their marching orders. So this is the gateway into the old Cairo and um, really what's taking place here is in some sense a microcosm of globalization and that is in modernizing a town and area like this that some people actually may lose their livelihood. If cars are prevented from coming here, that's going to put a lot of people out of business. But in doing so, there are commercial as well as environmental issues to consider as well. And I guess this is going to be key to how Cairo is going to be developing for the future, and perhaps for the region and many other places around it. This is David Duncan, Jim for ViewMagazine.tv in Cairo.